shoegazing, post-rocking, the blackest of metal, literature, introspection, sensitivity and shit. Death Heaven have returned with their latest and fourth. What? It's their fourth album. Why did you interrupt me for that? I was trying to help with the intro. Fuck off. It's ordinary corrupt human love. Just trying to help out the intro. That was all I was trying to do. I just wanted to get Glorious day to be discussing some introspective, shoegaze-inspired black metal. Ah, glorious, glorious, glorious. The perfect setting, methinks. Just very quickly before I get started, if you do want to support the channel in any way whatsoever, if you're actually thinking of buying this album, uh, there's an Amazon link in the description. If you do buy it through that link, um, I get a little bit of a kickback uh, from Amazon himself, a couple of pence. So if you're thinking of buying the album anyway, then uh, yeah, just do it through that link and uh, you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Thank you. Uh. Okay, so Death Heaven are back with their fourth album, Ordinary Corrupt Human Love. And this is the follow-up to 2015. 2015! Fucking doubted myself. Their 2015 album, New Bermuda. Uh, this band pretty much came to prominence after their 2012 album, Sunbather, which mixed uh, black metal with elements of shoegaze. Uh, sort of uh, inspired by bands like the Smiths. There was post-rock influences such as Godspeed You Black Emperor. Definitely elements of Oasis as well. You get the idea of what I'm saying. You get the idea of what I'm saying, motherfucker. Don't judge me, man. Don't judge me, man. Apparently the title of this album is uh, inspired by Graham Greene's 1951 novel, The End of the Affair. There are a lot of literary influences on this album. Yeah, their music's come to be categorised as black gaze. As I mentioned just a minute ago, a kind of uh, combination of shoegaze, uh, post-rock and black metal. And uh, very well they do it too. They aren't the first, they're not the first to do it. They, uh, they even state that themselves as a French band who I should have really written down their name. But, uh, but I didn't. But yes, this is a very literary band. They use loads of words and shit. Now, as usual with my reviews, I don't really care what the band are classed as. I just care whether I actually like the music or not. And that's how I'm going to base this review, which will start thusly. There are seven songs on the album, and with the exception of two of them, all of them exceed the 10 minute mark. So there's a quite a heavy investment on the listener. First song is You Without End. This one starts out with the sound of waves and this beautiful piano arpeggio. And it's joined by some luscious reverb, delay drenched, clean guitars, which uh, permeate the entirety of the album, actually. I very much felt that it uh, reminded me a lot of early Verve. I know the band are very uh, fond of Oasis, but uh, this uh, early Verve that I keep coming back to on this album, just that uh, really sort of psychedelic, spaced out, uh, clean, really bright uh, sounding guitars. Not only does it have that early Verve kind of sound, but uh, elements of Radiohead as well. This actually starts out with a spoken word piece by actress, uh, what's her name? Nadia Curie. Uh, she's reading an extract of a short story from an anthology called Oakland Noir. The band are from uh, the Bay Area. Oakland, Hampshire. He pained, shifting his attention towards the mirror across the road, back into his daydream. The spliff burned his fingers the second he drank and he tossed it towards the gutter. The smoke burned into his eyes, blinding him. As he blinked through the tears, the pain began to recede. Back down the promenade and homeward bound, as he approached the intersection of Brooklyn and Lakeshore, a flock of geese burst from the darkness and flew, shrieking into what was left of the daylight. One day, I'll fucking do that in one take. It's written down. I've got it written down. I'm not even reciting it. I'm fucking... Vocalist George Clark takes over with his uh, feral black metal shriek. Uh, but it's quite low in the mix. I've not actually heard Death Heaven prior to this album. I know they've, they've been on my to check out list for quite a while. And uh, I wasn't particularly taken by the black metal vocals 
at first, but I have to say, after a couple of listens, it, it makes, it actually works really well. It makes perfect sense. This is done over a melodic guitar line and we get some great guitar work from Kerry McCoy later on that's very reminiscent of um, Finn Lizzy or uh, Queen was kind of the vibe that I was getting. What a glorious day to discuss such introspective, miserable music. Next up, we have the first single that was released, Honeycomb. There's a reference to an Argentinian writer in this, uh, Julio Cortazar, who wrote an elaborately structured stream of consciousness piece uh, called Hopscotch. This one starts out much more in the black metal vein uh, before morphing into this kind of Burzum meets early Oasis. As I'm a huge fan of both bands, it works particularly well for me. One thing I did find throughout the entirety of the album, the lead guitar tone is very, very reminiscent of Noel Gallagher. It's uh, quite interesting tones they use on this, actually, for the black metal stuff as well. It's, uh, it's very nice. It's very lovely. The outro of the song, again, I felt had very strong leanings towards uh, Verve's early work as well. Now, despite the black metal delivered lyrics, there's actually a lot of beautiful stuff here. I'm reluctant to stay sad. Life beyond is a field. A field of flowers. Ah, oh, that's nice. I do, I do like me a nice lyric. Next up we have the second single, Canary Yellow. Shimmering clean guitar, drenched in reverb and delay, as I've fucking said about five fucking times. Around three minutes in, the black metal vocals kick in over the more sort of shoegazer style instrumentation. I have to give a particular mention to Daniel Tracy, the drummer. His drumming throughout the album is just on point. I don't know if I'd go so far as Bron Daler, but uh, he's got, uh, I really love the drum fills he puts in. He really fills the space in a good way. It's, uh, I I'm, I'm a fan of that sort of style of drumming. He really, uh, he fills the space with a good fill. He really does. Well done, well done. Good on you in those fills, sir. At around the six minute mark, things go full on black metal. Uh, really good before going back to another more sort of Noel Gallagher style influenced piece. On his Instagram page, vocalist George Clark, uh, he actually wrote that uh, this song is about living on in the memory of others. And there's one line in particular that stood out. I have wondered about the language of flowers. I think that's in reference to a, a literary piece again. I'm not sure which one it was. It's a bee. Beware. Bee. Beware. Next up we have Nia. I think this is like a four and a half minute song. It's one of the shorter songs in the album. Five and a half minutes, I think. Which is uh, longer than most people's long songs. This is a bit of a break from the black metal, actually. This is all very uh, very pretty sounding guitars and instrumentation and the, the vocals are done cleanly. Oh, actually, no, I think they do. I think they do go a bit heavier towards the end. Actually, I'm not sure. I thought I saw you there, wishing you were near. I thought I saw you there, wishing you were near. Again, again, I could have just said that one time. I thought I saw you there, wishing you were near. There's three times he said it now. Can I rest for a while, wishing you were near? I think I can understand why it's called near. Up next, we have Glint. This one starts out with a long instrumental intro before going into one of the heaviest sections on the album, in my opinion. Despite the relentlessly heavy delivery of the, uh, the instrumentation and the vocals, um, there's actually a lot of sensitivity in the lyrics. Imagining you growing older, somehow more beautiful, surrounded by your children and children's children, the midnight blue, the midnight blue of your calmness, evening chamomile. Oh. This one was a real highlight for me. Um, I really did find after a couple of listens, this album really started to grab hold. Wasn't immediately taken with it, but um, it didn't take me long. Some really, really good stuff on this album. It is glorious out here today, which is not the mood I should be in for this sort of music. I apologize. Night People is up next. And this one features Chelsea Wolfe and her longtime collaborator, Ben Chisholm. This one's got a lot of piano and a more electronic elements. Kind of more in line with uh, Chelsea's music, I suppose. Her performance on it is, is stellar, as it always is. I absolutely love the sound of her, her haunted banshee wail. God bless that beautiful goth chick. Biblical sky speckled with flame. Do you hold your mother's eyes? From wetting the earth, from weeping for those who reward fame to absolutes of war. No idea 
but it sounds lovely. And final song on the album is Worthless Animal. Again, we start out with those gorgeous delay reverb drenched guitars and feral black metal vocals straight into it. Then search to pin the legs of the stalking dog that lends its teeth to sticky sad bedlam. War cries quake through lurching light. I bury a blade between its ribs, bear hug the soft canine frame, then smear ash on its brow. And the, uh, the final words on the album, all who have forgotten, remember now. Remember now, now, now. So those were the final words and the track fades out to waves, much as it faded in to waves. I don't know what they mean, but you know, what, what's, uh, oh, I don't know. I'm not even gonna try. I know fuck all. I know fuck all. And that, uh, that closes the album. There's some, uh, there's some more great lead work from Kerry McCoy. Again, with that uh, real Noel Gallagher sounding tone. Sounds great, absolutely. I, I'm really, really impressed with how good this album sounds as well. Everything's where it should be. The guitars are all separated from the drums and the bass, the vocals, everything's, I, I, I really enjoyed the mix on this album. I thought it was great. I think this is about a 70 minute album, something like that. Seven songs, most of them exceeding the 10 minute mark by a good stretch. It's gonna take a good investment of your time, but I think it's highly worth it. There's some really, really great stuff on here. I was not sold on it initially. When I listened through to the album first time, it was kind of meh, 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 But uh, it really, it was pretty much on the second listen once I knew what I was letting myself in for. I was all in, glorious. Glorious, glorious sounding album. Despite the bleakness of the vocal delivery, it ultimately seems like a very hopeful album. I'll probably listen to it in a minute, actually, in this weather. It uh, kind of, despite the bleakness of it, it kind of seems fitting. There's a kind of beauty to it as well. That I really enjoyed. There's a lot of hype around this band at the moment. There's a lot of people taking pot shots at them. But I'm a firm believer that a lot of time there's a hype around a band for good reason. Sure, I know you can have your manufactured bullshit, but this is far from it. This is genuinely, I think this is genuinely emotional, heartfelt music done by people who mean, who mean what they're playing. And uh, I think, I think the hype is justified. I got no issue with this. I'm certainly going to go and check out the rest of their catalog. Elitists can fuck off. Hipsters can fuck off. Uh, well, I guess I can fuck off. And think that one through. I'll probably give this a nine out of 10. Really, really enjoyed it. Truly beautiful music and uh, highly recommend you check it out. Give it a bit of time, you'll get into it. I assure you, you're gonna love this one. Awesome. So what have I got coming up next? Well, next one will be my Mastodon Leviathan classic album review. That should be out in a couple of days. Next week, I'm gonna be, I think I'm gonna be reviewing the new Skeleton Witch album. Heard a lot about them, never actually checked them out, as is quite often the case. Um, I'm gonna be looking at Scars on Broadway, Darren Malakian's uh, side project. So those two albums will be reviewed next week, as well as uh, something else. I might do some PMA stuff. I haven't done that in a long time. I've had a few people asking now. So maybe that'll be next week's uh, three videos. Uh, I've, I've spoke enough. I might also quickly do something as well about um, a couple of albums that I haven't had a chance to review. So I might do a quick um, quick catch up of albums I've missed. Why not? It's an extra video, fuck it. Bleed this fucker for all it's worth, why not? Um, as I said, if you want to get the album, click the link below. I think I've said enough. If you, uh, if you like the video, please like it. It does genuinely help out the video, sends a message. Um, if you've subscribed, awesome, share. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and leave a comment as well. It's always good to hear from you people. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to leave you now and I'm going to go and enjoy this frankly gorgeous day. How nauseating for you to end it like that. Oh, God.